Hello, and welcome to Auto Inform Online Magazine. My name is Frank Massey. In this diagnostic feature, I'd like to present Bosch Common Rail EDC 17. It's a feature that we've covered before, but there's been a lot of very subtle changes, but I think important changes in respect of the way that we test the hydraulic functionality. So what I'd like to begin with is, is to present the system and the changes are some of the changes that have taken place, the evolution of, of common rail and how that affects the testing process. There's a, a couple of subtle changes I'd like to present. First of all, the overview of the actual system. This is what is referred to as dual point control. Now, by dual point control, there are two hydraulic actuators or solenoids which control pressure. The first is an inlet metering valve or volume valve, often referred to as M-prop or sometimes suction valve. That controls the inlet of low pressure fuel supply to the high pressure pump. The second device is referred to as a DRV or pressure regulation valve. Druck, uh, Druck is German for pressure control ventricle. That, in our case, is placed at the end of the accumulator or high pressure rail. So it's a, it's a dual responsibility, controlling flow. If you increase flow for a given rotation speed, the pressure will increase. And if you reduce flow, then clearly the pressure will um, uh, also reduce because the pump isn't being primed to the same volume. On the escape route, the high pressure valve closes to increase pressure and if you release uh, the amount of current through the valve then it will open more easily and the pressure will reduce so it's dual point control they're both controlled by duty in other words they're ground controlled ground is on on drives them in or closed now the fact that they both close also means that they have uh, in effect the reverse uh, responsibility. You close the inlet metering valve, you reduce pressure, you close the pressure control regulator, you increase pressure. We're going to examine the actual duty electronically. The value of the, the duty is important to be understood because it predicts the right control functionality. In other words, if there is adaption or correction where there is a pressure deviation, so in other words, when you look at actual uh, request and specified values, if there's a deviation, then the duty will change. It's important we understand what that duty should be to predict a hydraulic fault without actually intruding in on the system. So much for the, uh, the, the changes in, in that part of the system. So far as connectivity is concerned, I've also chosen to use a slightly different probe. It's a probe we actually used an awful lot in the past. Um, these are a switchable attenuation probe. In other words, I can switch the sensitivity or range of the probe simply by operating that switch. So times one is forward. What I mean by times one is 10 volts in will be presented as 10 volts. If I throw the switch back, I increase that range to 100 volts. Um, so it's a nice, easy uh, way of changing the attenuation or range of the input signal. The main reason I've chosen it is the type of jaw because one of the problems we have now is restricted access to various components. I've connected the first channel, the blue channel, to the rail pressure sensor. I've connected the second channel, red, to the, the DRV, pressure regulation valve. And the third channel, green, to the inlet metering valve. This channel at the moment is unused. The second change we've made with this type of connectivity is in the probes we've traditionally used and still do, in fact one of the probes I am using now is that probe which is made up of quite a hardened machine needle uh, with in effect a female 4mm banana plug adapter. The other probes we're using are hypodermic needles. The problem with that type of probe is that it's extremely tough but quite brittle. This is much more malleable. It, it actually is quite tough and will stand a degree of bending and it will not break. 
And the beauty of that type of device is that the length of the probe lends itself to uh, restricted access and also fits very effectively around that kind of jaw. So a lot of the diagnostics we're now doing uh, because of this type of connectivity and the quality of this connectivity uh, we're using those probes. The earth lead is partly an issue. Uh, you shouldn't really extend the ground reference lead. However, we do have a slightly longer earth lead should it become appropriate, but you are restricted to the earth. And we tend to do, in effect, what we call a floating measurement. When we take a measurement across the component, we will often take the ground from the component as well as the signal. Um, so that lead actually worked quite well for us. So there's some changes that have taken place quite recently. And of course, the hypodermic needles come in all sorts of shapes, even bigger than this. So there are different sizes that are suitable for different cable sizes. And I guess the ruggedness of the type of connectivity we're trying to achieve. So they work quite well. I'd like to explain the setup with the oscilloscope and the reason I've chosen the oscilloscope rather than serial data, and I, I do stress the point that I am not at all negatively minded about serial data. I find myself using it more and more. It's a very valuable diagnostic tool. However, with some of the features we're going to look at now, the speed of data update and the way it's displayed, which is numerically, is not compatible with accurate testing. In other words, the, the update of the data isn't in real time. And with issues with common rail and pressure deviation, it's unlikely you're gonna see the defect. So for that reason, we do it in real time uh, visually. The channels I've already mentioned. Rail pressure we've set up on blue, measured in voltage. And there's also a very subtle change in this system as well. Previously, Bosch common rail control would have around 1.3 volts at or around 300 bar pressure in the rail. This has now dropped to around one volt. That's a subtle change, not a very big change, but one that's, that's worth noting. On the red channel, we're looking at the, the DRV and you can see that it's um, a duty controlled device. Uh, ground is on. So at this point, uh, current runs through the valve, which drives it in which increases pressure. So to increase the rail pressure, that on time would expand. The longer it's on, the more current flows through the device and the harder it closes against the pressure and therefore th the pressure will increase. The green image is the uh, inlet metering valve, M-prop or uh, suction valve. Now you can see straight away the, vault, the, the actual on time is much greater. The amount of change in its control functionality is much less. You'll get very little change in that device in terms of percentage on, it's ground on also. Um, whereas the DRV changes quite a lot. You'll, you'll get somewhere between 18, 20% up to around 45% duty change on the DRV. Whereas the inlet metering valve, probably from around 30 to 35%, quite a small subtle change. The voltage, of course, is going to change considerably. Uh, the rail pressure sensor is a 5 volt device and we're expecting a voltage variation from around 1 volt at idle uh, right up to about 4.5 at full system pressure. So the first thing we're going to do is, in effect, a profile uh, test where we run the car with normal control and take an image of the functionality of both devices looking at rail pressure. We're then going to do what we call a proof test, which once again we've covered before, where I'm going to put the system into a default and run the pump briefly by taking manual control of the signal of this device, the DRV, by grounding it out. That will drive the pressure to full system. The engine will then cut out because it sees, a, in effect, a system critical defect, which is excessive pressure. The injectors will be interrupted, they're piezo injectors, so the interruption will be pretty quick. Uh, the pressure will rise and it's my intention to keep that device at ground to, to show you that the actual pressure in the rail remains permanent. So what I'd like to do is prepare the car ready for the test and then we'll demonstrate those two tests very shortly. I've now begun 
the first of several tests. First of all, we're going to take a look at the actual standard functionality of this system. The engines at idle. We're monitoring rail pressure voltage and the control duty cycle of both the inlet metering valve and the DRV, the pressure regulation valve. You can see from the image and the voltage scale that we have, as near as damn it, one volt value from the rail pressure sensor. The DRV is being monitored and we've, I've requested out of the measurement section the duty control cycle and we'll look at average and we have a value of 82% off so of around 18% on so in other words the, the on cycle represents 18% that's pretty much where the system used to be on older variants um, so at idle normal pressure in the rail should leave us with about an 18% duty the inlet metering valve or, or suction valve or M-prop has a duty of 69 let's call it 70% so it's 70 off 30 on and that also is the type of figure that we would expect from an inlet metering valve on this generation of, of system so far so good now what I'd like to do next is put this system into default. I'm going to disconnect the inlet metering valve. It will fail open, which is full volume priming to the pump. The DRV will take over command in a default uh, situation to enable the vehicle to be driven, albeit in limited strategy. I'm then going to manually ground that device and that will then achieve full system pressure. The pump will then create full pressure. The management will detect that system critical fault uh, and immediately kill the injectors. But by then, due to the rotation speed of the engine, we will have full system pressure. To do that test, I need to sit in the car to go through a series of, of tests. The first test I'm going to do is over a 50 second cycle time to do a standard profile. So it's uh, key on, engine off, key on, crank and start, allow the engine to idle, wide open throttle, a watt test as we call it, and key off. I'm going to look at that profile. That's, that's the second part of the practical uh, demonstration. And then the final part is this proof testing where we short out the DRV. So what I intend to do now is prepare the scope for a, a long uh, cycle time and to do that I'm going to choose a 5 second time base which with a 10 grid screen gives me a 50 second sweep time. Now straight away you can see that it's now inappropriate to study duty with this time base but we're not worried now about duty we've measured the duty cycle I'm now concentrating on this part of the signal which is the rail pressure sensor signal and I'm now going to go to the vehicle and conduct this series of tests that we've just discussed I'm going to wait until the screen starts a clean sweep from the left hand side go through the profile at that point then we'll discuss the image or profile and how we then use that diagnostically in assessing the vehicle hydraulic condition. The first part of the process is key on engine static. I'm now going to crank and idle the engine. I want to give it a short period of time to monitor the stability of the rail pressure. The next phase of the test is a wide open throttle test. Now we have limited RPM, which is now pretty much standard. That limits our ability to test the pump at full pressure. I'm now going to switch the engine off. And now we're going to analyze the captured data. This is the conclusion to the second part of the, the, the practical test. 
the profile test of this particular system variant and there are some slight changes to the profile so as such we're going to update um, our own information system in keeping with that and the reason we do that of course is that we then have an accurate reference whenever this system is then presented to us with a diagnostic problem we have a very accurate reference now the benefit I think in many cases with transmission systems and powertrain systems is that these systems are shared by many manufacturers so there's not an endless amount of R&D involved here. Right, let's take a look at the profile. We're not interested in the control duty cycle. There's, there's no interest in that at the moment. I want to concentrate on the rail pressure which is the channel one blue image. First of all we analyse this part of the signal. You can see because of using quite a high sample rate there's a great deal of detail in this image so I can in effect zoom in and look at a great deal of embedded data. We look at the, the rise in pressure. As the pump rotates it will add pressure on each compression stroke within the pump and what we, one thing we tend to measure and it's quite important is what we call the rise time. That's the time taken to go from a static zero pressure in the rail which by the way is half a volt so you're looking at 0.5 a volt there to the point where and you can see by the increase in frequency the engine has started the rotation speed has increased so we know when the engine fires and that's the rise time and that should now be around half a second with modern systems this is 609 milliseconds 0.6 of a second that's excellent no problem with that we also want to look at the actual average rail pressure voltage you can see that there is deviation in rail pressure that's quite natural now in other words there is turbulence within the rail itself in terms of pressure variation due to the rotation of the pump but the average voltage if we take an average through there is exactly one volt so we're happy with that we then take a look at the simulated now use the word simulated full load because obviously the engine speed increase is restricted which means the rotation speed is restricted therefore we're not going to make full system pressure but we can still look at the increase in pressure and in fact if I zoom into that one more time you can see that there's a great deal of detail and we can see that the pressure increases are uh, symmetrical there's no deviation in pressure which we don't expect to see deviations down which is a reduction in pressure or deviations up suggesting that there may be a problem with the control regulation devices sticking or, an in, or a, a, perhaps a problem with an injector um, the increase in pressure is even throughout the, the, the range I'm quite happy with that and we also look at the peak voltage so I will do a, uh, a peak voltage check which is around 2.93 volts that also tends to be a pretty stable figure that we're getting now from most common rail systems on, on the wide open throttle test that is not however full system pressure regrettably the way systems now operate is that when we then turn the engine off there is no decay time available to us the pressure is effectively dumped or discharged from the rail so we are denied the um, pressure decay test. That brings us to the third test that we're going to conduct which is to put the pump into a fail safe so there's a, a little bit of preparation because what I'm going to do is disconnect the inlet metering valve which then leaves it wide open full volume put a temporary ground to the DRV run the engine and we'll show you this in real time so I'm actually going to uh, prepare the engine, get the engine running, short out the DRV and you're then actually going to see the rapid increase in rail pressure and we can then look at, at the decay. Now the interesting thing with uh, piezo injectors there is actually no decay. Once the hydraulic coupling which is part of the internal feature of a piezo injector um, once that injector is discharged um, and is off the pressure in the system should remain at full system pressure so unlike previous systems 
um, where there'd be a decay over a period of time, you should not experience a decay. So what I'd like to do now is run the engine. Um, first of all, disconnect the socket to the inlet metering valve, run the engine, and then we'll do this, what we call proof test. Now the proof test is conducted over a slightly shorter test period because the engine will cut out very, very quickly. Um, so probably 20 seconds is sufficient for that test. Uh, and then we can prove then if this pump and system uh, has the capability of building up full system pressure and retaining that pressure once it's been achieved. I'm now going to short out the DRV, waiting for the screen to update from the left. You'll see the pressure rise very, very quickly. There is the virtual instantaneous rise. We'll take a look at that. I'd also like you to note the fact that the rail pressure is now being maintained permanently, semi-permanently in the system. The hydraulic coupling in the injector has closed. That pressure should be maintained and held by the pump I'm going to capture that. The pressure is just under four volts, so probably around 1300 bar, 1400 bar actually contained within the accumulator rail and pump. And the really important part of the test is this. You can see that I've removed the control signal. So the DRV is permanently at ground. That hammers that device closed. If that device were faulty, it would leak, which means you're going to drop pressure. We're not dropping pressure. So we're actually testing the integrity of the DRV and the ability of the pump to withhold pressure internally. And of course the rail and of course the injector circuit. We need to look at this part of the test in detail. Now, this is where we're really testing the integrity of the pump, the ability of the pump to increase pressure with, with every compression rotation. And you can see that's done that very, very well. In other words, the pressure rises, it holds, it rises, it holds, it rises, it holds. We need to look at the rise of time. And if we go from that point to the point of maximum pressure, which I think is there. Now bear in mind, we're going from around 300 bar to around 13, 1400 bar, and that's taken 0.687 of a second. Once again, just over half a second, which is an excellent result. Very good pump. Clearly that pump is being primed well. It's holding pressure. And that really is the, 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 the equivalent of the proof, the pump proof test, and pressure decay, and there isn't a pressure decay, of course, on this system. And the next part I'd like to demonstrate, so that's the compression test, the proof test, is to run the scope again, and you can see the pressure still very much around the four volt mark, is to release the ground. And you can see that the system instantly dumps that pressure by opening the DRV. And the reason for that is that had it contained and held that pressure in the rail, if I was allowed to start and crank the vehicle, it would not let me do it under that condition. It would prevent me from cranking the engine because you've got um, a, a hydraulically locked pump that you're attempting to rotate from stationary with the timing belt. It would, I, I suspect it just rip the teeth off the belt. So to prevent that from happening, as soon as uh, I remove the ground, it dumps the pressure, I will be able to crank and start that vehicle now. Now, of course, there'd be DTCs now, both for the open circuit on the inlet metering valve and for positive pressure deviation from the, the rail pressure sensor, which it's my intention to clear those down, put it back into full closed loop. That concludes the feature on testing EDC 17 variant of Bosch Common Rail. If you're interested in developing your diagnostic skills, Please visit the AutoInform website for both details of our face-to-face -face training and DVD learning modules. We are also able to supply a selection of diagnostic tools.